This question is about the reactions of hydrogen peroxide H2O2. Part A. Hydrogen peroxide H2O2 iodide ions I- and acid H+, react as shown in the equation below. A student carries out several experiments at the same temperature using the initial rates method to determine the rate constant K for this reaction. The results are shown below. Part I. Determine the rate equation and calculate the rate constant K using units. To start, let's write a general rate equation for this reaction. A general rate equation for this reaction will be rate equals K and then each of our reagents. So H2O2, I minus and H plus. We then need to establish which order each of these reactants are. To do this, we look for where one reactant has increased by a certain value and the others have stayed the same. So looking at experiments one and two, I minus has increased by a value of two and H2O2 and H plus have stayed the same. Then you look at rate. Rates increase by a value of plus two or times two as well. Therefore, the order of reaction for I minus ions is first order. So I would have a little one going above its bracket. Then we continue to look. If we know that I minus is first order, then when it's dividing by two, hydrogen peroxide is increasing by times two and H plus is staying the same. Well, the rate is increasing by times one. It's not really changing or isn't changing. And if we know that I minus is first order, we would expect rate to half, but it hasn't, it stayed the same. And because hydrogen peroxide or H2O2 has increased by times two, therefore the order of reaction for H2O2 is also first order. So we'd have a one. If we continue, when H plus has increased by times two and I minus and H2O2 have stayed exactly the same, the rate has not changed. And so the order of reaction for H plus is zero order. So we'd have a little zero. Therefore, if we write the actual rate equation, we have rate equals K H2O2 I minus and we ignore the H plus because H plus to the power of zero is one. Now we need to work out rate. We can do this by subbing in values. So if we take experiment one, we have a rate as two times 10 to the negative six divided by the concentrations or initial concentrations of H2O2 which is 0 0.01 times 0 0.01. That gives us a value of 0 0.02 for our K. And then for units, well, we have moles per decimeter cubed per second over moles per decimeter cubed times moles per decimeter cubed. Then we need to cancel these out. So we can cancel out a mole per decimeter cubed and we're left with one over mole per decimeter cubed s to the minus one. Another way of writing that is mole to the minus one decimeters cubed per seconds. For this question, you get a mark for the correct rate equation a mark for the correct K value and a mark for the correct units. Part two, the rate constant K for this reaction is determined at different temperatures T. Explain how the student could determine the activation energy for the reaction graphically using values of K and T. In our data sheets, we get given an equation that links all of these pieces of information together. That equation is ln K equals EA over minus RT plus LNA. 
So our first thing when answering this question that we need to do is tell the student to plot LNK against 1 over T. And that means that our gradient will be EA over minus R. So find gradient and then we could also write in brackets what the gradient is, EA over minus R. And finally, to get EA, we need to well, times gradient by minus R, which is a value you get given in the data sheet, so you don't need to specify, but you, then you can write that it equals EA. For this question, you get a mark for each of the bullet points that I've drawn up here. So one for saying plot LNK against 1 over T, one for finding the gradient, and one for saying that the gradient multiplied by minus R equals EA. B. Solutions of hydrogen peroxide decompose slowly into water and oxygen. This reaction is catalyzed by manganese dioxide. Standard electrode potentials are shown below. Using the electrode potentials, explain how manganese dioxide is able to act as a catalyst for the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Your answer should include relevant equations. A way to lay this question out is by numbering the equations that we're given. If we use Roman numerals, we can refer to them later on when answering. So first we need to write the equation for reaction 1 and 2. So we can see how using Roman numerals is a good idea because you don't have to write them all out. So if we look at their electrode potentials, the more negative, which is 1, that equilibrium would go backwards and 2 would go forwards. So if we combine these, we would have H2O2 plus Mn. O2 plus 4H plus goes to Mn2 plus plus 2H2O plus O2 plus 2H plus. We're not finished yet. Because there's an H plus on both sides, these two would disappear and this 4 would turn into a 2. This is our first equation and then if we write an equation for 2 and 3 again looking at their directions well the more negative this time is reaction 2 and the more positive is reaction 3 so writing the equation we would have H2O2 plus 2H plus plus Mn2 plus plus 2H2O goes to MnO2 plus 4H plus plus 2H2O. I'm not writing the electrons here because we know that we are going to cancel them out and if they were like say 2 and 4 then you would need to multiply and scale up the equations but that's not necessary here, so we don't need to write them. And we would end up cancelling them out anyway, making them even more irrelevant. So the H plus again, the 2 disappears and the 4 becomes a 2. But also we've got two waters on both sides, so they would disappear as well. So our reaction equation is pretty small for this one. Now, a bit of reasoning, we would write that the electro potential for I is more negative than 2, so shifts left. And that's enough reasoning. And then to answer the rest of the question, how MnO2 acts as a catalyst, well, we can say that MnO2 is regenerated and that is enough to get our four marks for this question you get a mark for each of your equations a mark for referring to electrode potentials and how they shift and then a mark for saying that mno2 is regenerated 
which means that it's able to act as a catalyst. C. Peroxy carboxylic acids are organic compounds with the COOOH functional group. Peroxy ethanoic acid CH3COOOH is used as disinfectant. Part I. Suggest the structure of peroxy ethanoic acid. The COOOH functional group must be clearly displayed. So the compound that we're drawing will roughly represent a carboxylic acid. And a carboxylic acid, when we draw it out, will displayed, it looks like this. So when we're drawing a peroxy carboxylic acid or peroxy ethanoic acid, we can have the CH3 group. We don't need to draw that all out because they're only asking for the functional group. And that would look like this with roughly a carboxylic acid group being represented, but instead, because it's peroxy carboxylic acid, instead of having the carbon here bond to an OH, we've got it bonding to an oxygen and then the oxygen bonding to the OH, which makes it slightly different to just a carboxylic acid. So for this question, you need to draw the structure completely correct, having the carbon-carbon bonding together rather than carbon-hydrogen here, as I've drawn C3H rather than CH3 and having the hydrogen bonding to the carbon because that wouldn't work. So making sure we've got this whole correct will get you the mark. Part two, peroxy ethanoic acid can be prepared by reacting hydrogen peroxide with ethanoic acid. This is heterogeneous equilibrium. A 250 centimeter cubed equilibrium mixture contains concentrations of 0.5 mole per decimeter cubed of hydrogen peroxide and 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed of ethanoic acid. Calculate the amount in moles of peroxy ethanoic acid in the equilibrium mixture. So firstly we need to understand what this question is meaning. A key word in this question is heterogeneous. Heterogeneous means that it's in different states. We can see this in the reaction or the equilibrium that we've been given because water is a liquid here peroxy ethanoic acids aqueous, so is ethanoic acid and hydrogen peroxide. When writing an expression for Kc, because we're given Kc here, we use the same states. So our expression for Kc would be that peroxy ethanoic acid, because we work backwards when writing an expression for Kc, over hydrogen peroxide multiplied by ethanoic acid. If we plug in values for this, we've the square brackets in Kc, they mean concentration, and we've got values for concentration. So rewriting Kc, we have peroxy ethanoic acid over 0.5 and 0.5 again, because they're the values we've been given as the concentration of hydrogen peroxide and ethanoic acid. We also know that this equals 0.37. So if we rearrange this to get the concentration of peroxy ethanoic acid, we would write 0.37 multiplied by 0.5 squared. And that gives us 0.0925 moles per decimeter cubed. If we're working out moles on its own, we would use our equation triangle, NVC. A way of remembering this is Nigel's very clever. And if we were to apply this, we would take the concentration, 0.0925, and multiply by our volume, which is 250 centimetres cubed. We want it in decimetres cubed, so we times by... 10 to the negative 3, or divide by 1,000. That gives us a value of 0.023125 moles. In our answer, we would write this to an appropriate number of significant figures, 0.023, for example. For this question, you get a mark for writing your expression for Kc, 
a mark for working out the concentration of, of proxy ethanoic acid, and then a mark for working out your moles correctly.